everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp. And today I'm going to show you step by step how you can paint this sweet snowflake acrylic painting on canvas today. It's actually pretty beginner friendly. I'm going to break everything down uh, into stages and steps, explain every technique, every color mix, every tool. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. To help me bring you this lesson, he's going to make sure, excuse me, He's going to make sure that the camera is pointing at what I'm talking about, zoomed in when you need it zoomed in, and you can really catch everything. Now, if you're here for the live stream and you have a question, be sure to put that all in caps. And one of two things will happen. Either one of the moderators will share a video link with you or help you find that answer, or you might get your question answered live on the show. If you're here for the replay, I really appreciate you coming. Now you're gonna see this broken down into steps. We're gonna uh, put timestamps to the steps and that's nice because it helps you find your place again in the video later. Also, uh, about seven to 14 days after we release a written out instructions that go with the step pictures that match the video. So. If you're a layered learner, that's really going to help you get through. Uh, but of course, if you're just like a visual learner, you're like, yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> you can paint along with us today. Remember that you can pause me even during the live. So if I'm going fast, but you need a little more time, just hit that pause button. The chat will progress anyways, and you won't get behind on the conversation. And just let me be at your pace. Don't worry about being at my pace. I always worry about that with those guys at home. Let's get small and go over the materials. Okay, now. I have an eight by eight surface here. The paint on the palette is Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre. You could also use Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Titanium White. If you check the description below, or maybe our mods will drop one in the chat, there's a link to the website where the traceable is at. If you don't want to try to freehand this out, though it's easier than you think, so I highly encourage you to do it. But if you're like, no, no matter how easy you make it, I'm not going to enjoy it. There's a traceable for you to download. And the web page also has the materials as a second place and a reference. So those are nice things for you. <sighs> what a lovely day to paint today, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm excited. It's a good thing to do on a Thursday. I'm, I'm excited. Snowflakes on a Thursday. Okay, let's put up a step and we'll do the first easy step. Those who've been painting along this winter probably know what it is. <laughs> I'm going to paint the whole canvas color. And today I think I'm just going to paint the whole canvas thalo blue. Now you don't need to put the paint out like this. I just think it's fun to do. Um, I'm pretty good at eyeballing how much paint I'm going to need to cover a surface. And because this is the first ground or acrylic layer, I just need to get everything blue. It's going to help everything stick after and help me get this great effect that I'm going for. Now I'm going to take a big brush, big, big, big brush. You can use any brush. And I'm just going to paint this out on the surface till the whole canvas is this nice thalo blue. Isn't that lovely? That is. Easy step. <laughs> I do kind of come around the edges a bit just in case um, I want to frame because you don't want the white of the canvas showing through the edges of the frame. If you're not going to frame, you might paint the edges blue all the way because that's a nice way to make the canvas look finished even if it's not framed. You can see it can be very streaky. That's totally fine. But what we want is the entire surface to just have a nice little coat of blue on it. And that's going to give us the depth we need. Blue colors can be transparent. So coming in and creating depth like this right off the bat really helps us get what we need out of the painting to get that deep, deep color. Now I'm going to dry this thoroughly with my hairdryer. We'll come back and do the next step. But hey, You've done step one, and that was pretty easy. So step two should be fun, right? Guys, it's so nice to see everybody here in chat today. Man, it's just a crazy Thursday. Yeah, Thursday in the middle of December, painting along on snowflakes. That's like a thing to do, and I'm so glad you guys are here joining us. So uh, try your surface. Be ready for the next step. Should be pretty easy. I think we're probably going to draw some stuff, some framing in here. Um, to get our our you know unique snowflake and that's you know going to be the kind of cool thing about this it's a thoroughly dry so that's why she's kind of doing that you can see that the sheen on that will kind of take on a more matte surface a matte you know like not reflective um, 
less reflective. Even though, because, and, and that's kind of the funny thing is that some paints uh, are more glossy than others by nature, so that will uh, depend. As I ramble on about paint drying. Paint dries. That's what I do. Acrylic paint, anyways, dries very quickly. Now, just for convenience, I'm going to use this same brush. You could use a different brush, and I'm going to create the gradient that's in the deep background of this design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo green and phthalo blue together, and I'm going to make a turquoise. And to reveal that turquoise, I'll add just a little bit of white. And you can see that gives me just a nice little turquoise. And I'm going to start the top of the surface and start painting that down. More water on here. Just a nice little turquoise coming down. I can get a little more uh, just stray blue and green into it as I come down, darkening it. Come grab even a little ultramarine blue, kind of for this transition transitional phase. See, I'm just going back and forth, sort of blends it. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to grab a little bit of my phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And I want a very kind of dark green blue color down here. If you have too much brown in it, it won't come off. So you definitely want this biased blue. And I'm going to just blend that back up. Right, and that's gonna give me that nice kind of green to dark blue effect we have. Now, here's a neat finishing touch. If you don't, if you want it even smoother than what you see here, if you take a soft blending mop, this is an oval mop. Uh, I'll grab this one here. This is a, a one and a quarter, uh, no, one inch oval mop, 2.5 centimeters uh, by Princeton. It's in the select line, it's synthetic. And if I go over this very gently coming down, Look at how it softens and blends this as if it were an oil. Just a fun little trick if ever you need to soften a transition. All right, that's not bad. And it's, oh, oh. It dripped. It dripped, that's very bad. Drips are bad. Because <laughs> what will happen is it will loosen the paint up that's starting to bind to the canvas and make something. So I had to get that right away to prevent that. And that's just a, a, a mistake of where I have bringing a wet brush over my canvas. Now, we're gonna dry this, super easy. We've got our beautiful blended transition now, super deep, super green. And we'll come back and we'll do some bokeh. And this, you'll really be, you know, I'll try to leave it on this angle for you to see that, uh, you can see that the reflectiveness in kind of the center, it starts to dry faster. So that sheen goes away pretty quick. But uh, it is important to make sure you dry between layers. And as you go in the overhead, you can see that the, the, as soon as the glossy goes away, you can really start to see the color. Uh, that that those high gloss reflections can make it so that it uh, it just blasts out. It makes it hard to see the those subtle colors. Which is why you should go see paintings in person, it at museums because it really does look different in person than even in the best photography, because. Uh, light hits it at different angles in different ways and that uh, adds complexity to the visual experience of the viewer. Now on on my visual I have a really strong visual between green and blue but I don't necessarily see it on my camera. Oh yeah you do. We can see it here. Can you see it yeah, there? It, no no see, I, would, I would say that it's you can see the difference between the green and blue. It's dark. Yeah it's I dark, think I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back actually, with my actually, mop. Let me just look. No, um, um, we're pretty close. No no I just okay. No, you're okay. I'm just like, I'm no. going to lighten this up then. Sure. So I'm going to take this oval mop that I had earlier and I'm going to go back into my turquoise, which is my phthalo blue and phthalo green. And I'm going to add a bit more white into that and grab a smidge of my yellow. I just want this to be just one lighter shade here. So sometimes I will do that. I'll come in and be like, oh, I want it to be a little bit different. See how we just kind of pop that just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I can always go right into my ultramarine, and it just will blend down into the dark area of it. I just want this corner to just be a little bit lighter.
That was a little bit of blue there in a streak. Sometimes you have to do that when you're going. You're like, hmm, it's dry, dark, or something has happened, and you need it to just be a little more in value than what you had there. There we go. That's kind of nice. So see, even when you're going along, you'll have little moments where you're like, oh, I need to make adjustments here. I want to create a little bit. Now, we're not going to call it a whole new step. I'm going to dry this and then just continue on the bokeh like we talked about. But I just right. wanted to make that adjustment before I added all my dots. And I think it'll make a difference in the final piece. Yeah. So sometimes adding that, that higher contrast um, in the background can add more you know, more complexity. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, when you go to a museum, you really can't see a difference in a painting hanging on the wall uh, than you do um, in, a paint, in, a, in, a, in a photograph. Because naturally, man, like photographs, there's so many levels of color matching that have to happen along the way between uh, the um, image and the camera and the camera and the computer and the computer and the printer and the printer and the mm -hmm. paper and the paper and the ink and the... <sighs> what? Just it's you. What you can see in a museum is oftentimes much more vivid and visually oh, complex. Usually, than, much more. It's even even museums make prints. You buy the print from the museum, and then you go back and look at the original painting. And it's so far off. It's really surprising, especially when it used to be lithographs. Now the technology, I think, has come a little bit further. But when it was lithographs and hand pulled prints, man, that used to be very different. I'm going to take a brush. This is called. A round blender by the Princeton Select. It's the number 12. If you have my pouncers, you could use those here very easily, but I'm going to do the brush. Into where I had the phthalo blue and burnt sienna, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. And I'm going to come here. Now I've got my snowflake in the center, so I don't have to worry about being too centralized with my bokeh, right? But I do want to have nice bokeh. kind of all around. So I'm just making little soft, kind of diffused little circles. So you could do pouncers, you can do these little diffused circles, they're both fine. What's a bokeh? Bokeh is an out of focus effect that happens on cameras, usually a lens distortion, though you can intentionally do it on purpose. It used to happen to you on accident. <laughs> But then some very clever photographers were like, let's make this happen because we want it to happen. You'll notice that sometimes I'll add a little white to lighten, you know, and that's an important thing. I'm just coming through with this first line. And so these are the out of out of focus lens of lens effects, lens artifacts. When, from, yeah, that are but at this point, they're just a decorative element in the painting. Right. Now, a lot of times you'll find it like in Photoshop, there's actually a, a bokeh effect generator where you can like throw bokeh. Yes, there is. If you're like, why is there bokeh when I'm doing these <laughs> digital pieces? I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, you know, so in, in today's. And now that Luna's teaching me Procreate, I don't imagine it's going to get better for you. <laughs> 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 so, you know, there's all sorts of cool lighting effects and things that you can now layer in modern digital imagery. That Which is not the same as artificial art. I've been getting that artificially intelligent created art is not the same as digital art. Totally different yeah, things. They really totally. are. Totally. Super different. Super different. Somebody was like, do I have to say it's artificial art? I'm like, nope, nope, still digital, still original. <laughs> it's just digital media. Although I, t I tell you what, it, you know, give Photoshop a couple of additions to catch up and they're going to have AI processing built in where it's <laughs> like, would actually to give it the look, right? To, the filter on it. To be honest, I use the Band-Aid tool all the time yeah. and it is like magic. It is like magic. It's just like, I don't use the Band-Aid tool, but I know you do. Well, and that's no, okay. I'm keeping these blue ones kind of like in this darker blue sort of focus down here. I'm going to have to show you how to use a Band-Aid because it's pretty cool. It's like... I'm going to go a little more thalo blue. So see, these are sort of subtle. Just like to put them different places. I get all excited with it. Now I might come here a little more into my thalo... Uh, green and blue to get that turquoise color. So 
Just coming through with the blues first. So, yeah, I'm loving this. It is good, though. Like, if you're doing a painting and you want to pre-design it and be able to change things a bunch and uh, look at different options, you know, in traditional painting, you generally just do a bunch of paintings <laughs> and decide what you like best. It's called iteration. But in digital artwork, you can go into something. I'm now using Procreate, but I was using SketchUp and Adobe uh, Fresco because the uh, dry one, draw one has been taken away. I don't know why anybody would do that, but they did. And um, I, don't know, I was kind of pre-designing there. And that makes a big difference in, in what you get to do, I think. Kind of creating some lighter ones there. Now, some of these might be behind the snowflake, and that is okay. We don't mind that. That's all right. Oh, I got a little excited there. That's okay. Just putting these around. Just trying to think about what might be here. My pressure is very light. Uh, Tia's like, I might have missed it. What brush is for this bokeh effect? So this is a number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. I highly recommend having this brush in your brush bucket. Um, I'm not someone who's like, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. But the few things I do suggest, there's always good reason. <laughs> this one is definitely good reason. Um, and you can even find these at uh, Michael's, I found, or online pretty easily. And we're going to have them in our store soon. Our store is open, so that'll be really nice. You'll be able to get them there really easily. Find them no trouble at all. Let's rinse out this brush. Uh, Moderator Cad Red's like answering question. Why did I switch from pouncers to this? Okay, pouncers are so easy and wonderful, and I love pouncers. But when uh, the uh, deal we have with Silver Brush ended, you couldn't get the pouncers anywhere. And I didn't want to frustrate everybody with it. So I'm like, okay, let's find another way to do the bokeh. That doesn't mean I won't make pouncers and re-release them later down the road. I might. You can probably guess that. I'm going to dry this and come back to another step. You see, kind of makes this, this wonderful, lovely, just sort of out of focus, lights in the background kind of effect. And... Uh, that's that's kind of what we're trying to, to imitate there is that feeling of distant lights. I kind of like that with the little bokeh. I'll just go over here. You got distracted reading chat. Nice to see everybody here. Oh, gosh, it's so nice to see everyone. Oh, and uh, you are going to need a step, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Ooh, there you step. step three. I'm going to take still same number 12 round select bokeh brush, which also does clouds and bushes and the tops of waves. <laughs> so it's a, it's just, a, and it's such a good blender. It's a good brush. I should do a whole video about why I like this brush. I like should go through what my favorite brushes are and why they're my favorites. Like do a series of videos. Be like these, and this is why. So you guys go, oh, it's, a, there's reasons. Cause there really is reasons to it. I'm going to take, a little of my yellow ochre and uh, put this into my orange mix. So I'm just taking smidges of cad red and cad yellow and yellow ochre, kind of getting that nice orange tan color. I'm going to get some white into it. And you can see that gives us the um, background color here. And let's start kind of testing that out maybe. And we can go a little lighter. That works. So again, it's a little of the cad red, cad yellow, and yellow ochre. I like the effect with this brush, even for these. Just does so much for me. So much. A little more white on here. 
And here's a trick. If you need to like kind of uh, neutralize the amount, you can get a little bit of your ultramarine blue to cool it a bit and see it takes it to that beigeier color. So there's options here. I'm just soft when I want to make smaller ones and then I'll go bigger when I want to make bigger ones. Let's make a nice big bokeh right here. Kind of implying that one's going off the canvas. Yeah, I think as we go around, you just find different stuff that you might want to do. Make a big one there. And then I think I'm going to come in here and, interestingly enough, get a little bit of my ultramarine blue. Mix some blue into it, over it, so it's not uh, just yellows over. Yeah. And I'll play with this. It would be easy for it to get completely away from me. <laughs> you could just keep bokeh away. <laughs> you could. Do, You'd do, do like all the bokeh <laughs> for all the days. Just at some point you have to you have to pull yeah. pull back and say you that's have to enough. be like that's enough bokeh. <laughs> enough background lights. Uh, on the program you're using, do you mix colors or is that a future Sherpa problem? So if you mean in the digital system, that's actually based on like an RGB and you find you, you do pick her off of a color wheel, right? And then from there, you have to figure out how those colors become colors in paint. Um, a workaround would be to go to Golden's Color Mixer. And you put in a color sample and it tells you what paints make that color. That's a fun little thing. I don't use that because you, they give you different tubes of paint because they, you know, these are the different three tubes of paint you would buy to mix these colors. And I, I'm like, I'm going to just use these. <laughs> but if you were trying to find that out, that would be a really good way that you could go about doing that. And it would work super well. Cool. Let's dry this and we'll go on to the next step. Yeah. So that's awesome. Thank you guys for coming in in here with us. Let's see this. This should dry relatively quickly because it's just add. This step was easy. It was just adding some kind of additional color texture to that background bokeh. And uh, you know, I think that she's kind of stayed in those yellow tones because it provides that nice contrast to the blues. You know, and that's the sort of color palette selection stuff. Do, 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 do. And you're okay. ready for a new step? New step. I'm going to take a very handy dandy tool. This is the essential snowflake tool. Because <laughs> snowflakes, uh, for the most part, are very geometrical and symmetrical. Though, apparently, there's like 67 base forms of snowflake. There's been a bunch of snowflake research and snowflake breakthroughs as of late. And they can make centricals and all kinds of different things. We're going to just do the classic. So this is this is the one field of study where I think if you came home and said, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to study snowflakes, and they might be like, couldn't you just be an artist? <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and find the halfway point four inches and then the halfway point again and just make sure where the center of my canvas is. Uh, this is going to upset commenter Glenn, who's very frustrated that we have done symmetrical paintings this year. <laughs> no idea Symmetry. How much that Ugh. angered Glenn. Symmetry. Just, just, and bless him, because I was like, wow, I was super triggered by symmetry. That's Sometimes right. symmetry happens in art. I don't know what to tell you. 
I don't know what to tell you. It happens. It can happen. All right. So we're going to come here and I do like to, I'm going to make this my longest line. So if I've got four here, I'll start out coming down to my six and my two. Maybe just a little past those, maybe six and a half and right there at the one and a half. So one and a half there and down here at six and a half, giving me a nice long line. And I will do something similar here off the center point. There's the one and a half part. And then there is trying to make it somewhat straight. Came down too far. It was not at the halfway mark. That's okay. And that's why we use chalk. So that's pretty nice. I may extend these out a little bit um, just by hand, but it's it's a pretty nice start to the to the whole thing. Gives and I think framework. I'm gonna do my snowflake if I can find it. My angle brush. I may do it with my angle brush because I think it's a nice sharp brush. But I don't know if I've cleaned. Oh, there it is. Okay. So do we need to call drawing a cross on this in its entire own step, or is it is that okay? I don't know where you're at. Do we need to step this? Well, here's what. At this stage, this is where you would use the traceable. So if you're going to use the traceable, this is the point where you put on the snowflake. Um, I'm I'm doing mine in several stages, but let's call it a step because if we're using the traceable and we can put that in the mini book, okay. this is the step you do the traceable in the whole complete one. I'm building my snowflake in stages um, with the chalk and the paint, but you can go right in with your traceable right now, if that makes sense. Now it I'm going to take does. a little bit of my... Uh, uh, yellow ochre and my burnt sienna and a little Mars black and make this kind of beigey color. And I'm going to begin by painting in as straight as I can. What's nice about this, it, this particular snowflake it is it is a little painterly. I'm just coming on the edge of the brush. You have to be careful because you might have some snowflake experts coming in here and telling you how not symmetrical you're being. I don't know. You know, here's what I have to say to the experts. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you got to do to get by. Although I do find that the deeper into the field of science you get, the happier they are to have any representation of paint happening. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not like the progression of man's at all accurate. There's a whole bunch of things where I've seen artistic renderings of stuff that's like, use like you know the one where it goes with like the little, little chimpanzee up to the dude? That's yeah. not accurate. Oh, no. That's it, not evolution. Oh. That's just an artist trying to understand a concept. Although almost all scientists are like, yippee, they drew a telescope. They drew something. <laughs> <laughs> they listened in some way, even though it's entirely wrong. Okay, so I've got this here. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to make a little bit in and a little bit in. And come in there. So see the end is kind of like this little pronged thing. These are not like super, I'm gonna have the shortest end coming towards me. Right now you're looking at why I started talking to the kids about Procreate because I didn't have an angle brush <laughs> in my Procreate. In my like, I won't use this program. It doesn't have an angle brush. <laughs> Luna's like, what? <laughs> no, I wanted to use Procreate because the program I had didn't have an angle brush. Oh, that's that's There's a silly. thousand brushes in Procreate. I was going to say, yeah, there's a bazillion in there. So I'm just making these little sort of chevronies coming out.
Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to stop there, dry it, and do my crossbars. Okay. Because I have to figure out where everything will fit as I paint it in as it's taking up space. All right. Um, and I may be elongating that. I'm not really sure. Probably not because I'll do these shorter in here. All right. So this is the... If, if you don't want to evolve your uh, snowflake along with us, then you can just use the traceable. But this is the evolution of a snowflake. And really one of the great things about a snowflake is that there's really kind of no wrong way to make a snowflake. So if you're following along and you're like, I like this snowflake, but I want mine to be slightly different, then feel free. New step, same step. New step. No. Oh. I'm going to take my ruler into my best approximation. Is that a technical distance? I need to bring this in because I've got oh, I that. I've got kind of an X and then there's something between the X's. So, so you're going to do the X first? Yeah, I'm going to do this little X first. That's a cross. That's, that's this a, should work. That's a semi-X. And then come in and kind of semi-X here too. I need it at that kind of nice little angle. Hopefully they're pretty similar. Let me tell you, the uh, the mirror tool is so much easier to do this in. <laughs> one, I wonder where. <laughs> <laughs> you just draw one line and then it draws all the rest of them I for mean, you. You're doing a really good job of eyeballing that, but I just I don't know what you're, how you're, how many segments are you going to split that into. I don't know as many as I had here in my original sketch. Okay, well, you, you're going to have to. Yeah, I've got I've got. You got some different protracting. You come can, here. Can I give you a hint? What? Corner to corner first. I don't know what that means. Okay, so if you grab the protractor. And it's not a protractor, it's a ruler. Or the ruler. Put it in the corner and then the corner. I'm going to come over and show you. Oh, but it, this isn't lined up on the corner. And those weren't lined up on the corner in the rendering. Okay. So that would just completely mess up the whole uh, thing. I see. Okay. Yeah. No, if I had designed it on the canvas, yeah, I would have used the corners. And that would have been smart, but I didn't. I designed it in SketchUp with a mirror tool. So this is where oh, we are. Oh, I see where you, yeah, you did kind of weirdo that one, didn't you? <laughs> There's just no need to be critical. <laughs> I'm not. You see, you, look, you have a unique snowflake. <laughs> I do. It's very unique in the world of snowflakes. I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to. You were like, you were like, how can I make this so unmathematically easy to do? <laughs> what, what would be the most complex way of saying, making this? There happen? is no maths. I feel like I'm going to just... Just grow your snowflake. I'm going to just be here. Okay. This is how many you get. Oh, that is right, though. Okay, I'm okay. So you get so many segments, and you just get the segments you get, is what you don't understand. So you got to work with the segments that you get. You don't get more segments past that. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. The corner thing completely threw me. Though what John's saying would make sense. <laughs> so, so, so I was wrong. Now I can just heckle you on your unusual <laughs> mathematics. I don't know that it's unusual mathematics. You don't no, know that. It's, it's magical. There, you that's all I was going you for. Great. Hmm? It did a great job making it symmetrical. That's what I was going for. It was symmetrical. So I'm making these shorter here, still using my angle brush. All of the uh, analytical neurodivergent people in the room are going, ah! Get me a protractor. <laughs> <laughs> and all the people that are neurodivergent my way are like, oh, great, thank you. I just didn't want to have to be stressed about that at all. <laughs> But see, it, it works. It creates the snowflake pattern, and that way you don't have to do any maths. There's no maths. Now, I'm going to come in here and continue to get my little gray snowflake color, which is my burnt sienna and yellow ochre and black. Which gives me this nice little putty. Just one putty. Okay. Okay. 
I like that the little forks are the start of everything. <laughs> it's the start of everything. It works them out. It does. It works them out. So that's what we're doing. We start with forks. Oh, Amy Overd is having a birthday on, um, it's my birthday on Sunday. Woohoo! Happy birthday. And thank you very much for the super chat, and we'll do a little dance. <laughs> oh, because we're Sherpa! I don't have a dance video channel for a reason. <laughs> we teach art, uh, not maths or dancing. Not maths. No siree, Bob. This had the opportunity to be a STEAM lesson, but it skipped it. <laughs> Can't do STEAM. This would melt. <laughs> All right. So we're just doing the thicker little uh, chevrons here. Okay. Believe it or not, once you have that base in, you're just golden the rest of the way through. So what we're going to do is we are going to dry this and then come back and add some um, turquoise. Okay. We're kind of outlining around everything. That'll be pretty cool. Just little, the turquoise outlining will make it. I like that color quite a bit, actually. And thank you guys. It's so nice to see everybody here. We're our Sherpa, and that's a wonderful, um, wonderful thing. We say that because it's. We used to watch all those funny. Sparta this will be great. You'll love this, huh? So we used to watch all those funny Sparta movies. Do we need to step this, or are we step? Yes, yeah, that was say step. Seven. Step it. All right. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow and white to my turquoise over here. And I want something fairly light, but, you know, darker than the, the white that's going to be there. And I'm going to kind of paint at this stage between the snowflakes. I'm still using my angle brush. This is a quarter inch angle brush by the Princeton Catalyst line. We're just going to start segmenting that in. And then I think I might elongate these a little bit. So this is a great chance to get to take care of that. And can you bring this kind of even around up stuff? Because it can be very, very helpful. I think I'm going to take those out. I want these to be a little bit longer. And I'll come kind of between and around like parts of the snowflake itself. See, I'm coming around the snowflake, kind of outlining it with the white in a very painterly way. That just means I'm not hiding that it's paint or the brush strokes or anything. I'm just being kind of artful with it. I just painted out that one there so I can come through and be like, no, go back. Okay, put it back, no problem. Just creating these little blue highlights around these little areas.
I'm just roughly painting it in and it's okay that you can really see the paint that you're kind of dry brushing it in yeah. and then it's painterly that part is super okay you want that I'm kind of here on the edge. I'm going to dry brush out to sort of create a little diffused transition. So it goes from the turquoise to the background using a dry brushing transition. That's instead of blending the transition, we allow the dry brushing to create our transition. Oh, you had the house open recently, didn't you? Uh, no, not at all. Maybe. <laughs> there's a fly. Oh, is there a fly in here? Yes. Sometimes there's flies. They come and go. And opens the house and then flies. It's one of the great trials and tribulations of our marriage. <laughs> but today was not it was not a guilty day. I didn't have it open. I think it was yesterday. Maybe. You got in yesterday. Okay. So we've created that painterly kind of area, right? And we can just, you know, get in there and I'll grab a little more. I'm adding a little darker coming back in. Kind of glazing over. Because I really, really want it to be uh, dimensional. Okay. Everything is good here. We're going to dry it. We're going to dry it and then we're going to start detailing some of this stuff out. Okay. Ah, got the glow in. It's just reading here in chat, so it's super nice to see everything. Yeah, this would look really cool with pearlescent paints. Um, and you could use those if you had some. Um, you could also use glitter. We used to use a lot more glitter um, when we had a studio that was ours. Right now we're borrowing Ginger's living room for a studio. But glitter would be a totally good thing to do if you weren't in your in-law's living room. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, you know. What happened? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. New step. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of working on some of the details here, lengthening some of these and kind of creating some of the personality of the snowflake. I think I want these to be maybe a little bit longer, so I'm going to come in and exaggerate that a bit. I'm going to come in and kind of join these up in a like central area, kind of a hub, a snowflake hub. You got to have a hub. Hitting that second line for depth. Now, you can come here and kind of create a little join there. And whatever I do on one side, I kind of want to duplicate, you know, on the other side. 
where it is ever possible. And I'm using this darker beige because that's going to be like the shadow sort of structure on my, on my little snowflake here. Kind of being playful with that one. Bring a little white over. They are noticing that you have blonde hair. Do I have blonde hair? Maybe. Just kind of creating a little fractal in there. And I can always just, you know, be like, come in with my turquoise and shape things out as well. So that kind of helps me here and there, kind of work out some of that. Okay, so now we have this sort of like loose little painting sketching in of this. We're going to dry all of it and come back and put in some highlights to make it pop. Highlights. And yes layers and layers and, and then once we get to the the sculpty layer that'll be really cool i like the sculpty part of the paint layer looking over at what she has out ahead of time i don't want to like spill the beans on what she's going to do hmm? i'm just i'm looking forward to the higher layers the more sculpty layers the more sculpty sculpt layers i don't know we'll we'll see if it works all right so a new step new step I'm adding a lot more white to my uh, wonderful little uh, snowflake shadow color. So it's much brighter. I'm still using my angle brush. And I'm gonna come here and without taking out all of the shadow, I'm gonna come down to my center hub, kind of stroking a highlight here. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's just Maybe I will add out some little kind of like little flares there. I like adding flares. Little snowflake highlight there. A little snowflake highlight there. Okay, make a little geometric shape around the center and kind of put a little dot in there. So it's snowflakey, snowflake esque. Highlight it, you know, we're just highlighting it, and this is the part that'll make it feel icicle y. A little bit of interdimensionality. Kind of curving these. A little bit thicker there. And notice that I'm leaving some of the shadow on these little spires. Right? I'm not taking away the dark. I want to leave some of that there.
eating the snowflakes. I'm putting little dimensions and sparkles and things. It is a good idea to make sure your brush is cleared out every once in a while. Capturing little highlights there. And then little flares out. So everyone's want to do a little flare. That's just an interesting little detail, right? Yeah. Kind of defining that in there. And that's really starting to take shape, that inner circle. Look at that go. Working itself out. It's weird, like when it starts to come in and then it really starts to come in. Don't need it out that long. So I'm just trying to figure out where it's going to go. I just look at the other side, if that makes sense. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. All right, let's dry that, and we'll come back and do another layer. And they just it's the layers and layers and layers that build up and make these look so good. It really is. So that's why it's, uh, when you're early on, you're like, hmm, how come we're doing in this odd order? Because of the layers. And the layers just make it all look kind of cool and painterly and give it that sort of wonderful, abstracted, snowflakey kind of feel. And that's how you get it. Okie dokie. So I am going to take titanium white in my fluid acrylic because my white's starting to gum up a little bit and it's hard to thin and also I want highly pigmented white and put it right here and I'm going to go ahead and get a number one liner this is the Princeton number one select liner and I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow over to that white so I'm just warming the white with a little bit of yellow Mm 
I'm going to add little dots there. Let's come at the side and add some dots here. Very carefully kind of lining up the side. Little highlights there. I'm just catching little highlights on the snowflake. Like light is reflecting. And catching little bits of it in a brighter little sparkle. <laughs> little lines. There's just a lot of this little bit to put around. So picking little areas like an inside edge here. See that adds just a little delicateness to that. You're so quiet. I don't know if I've lost my mind. No. I'm just watching you. <laughs> Painting you the dots. But usually you're just like talking, so I was like, I didn't know. Everyone's really enjoying how the little highlights come in and just make this pop, 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 pop. Yeah, just like, just little highlights. Just capturing little bits here and there. Little sparkles. And if it gets away from me, I can always come back and blend uh, the highlight down a little bit, see? So if it gets too strong there or something goes too far, I'm okay. I haven't lost lost control of anything. As we go around the radial, we just want to make sure that if I did it there, I do it there. Kind of what's what's guiding me. Little dots. And a little bit under here. We're not outlining, we're highlighting. Totally different thing. <laughs> totally different thing. Different Gets things. a good result. We like the result that we get.
I'm going to add little dots of sparkle here and there in the snowflake. Yep. This is something I always knew I wanted to do, but I didn't have a good uh, splatter tool for it. <laughs> Again, reasons that I'm going into a more involved tool set for the designing process. That what I've learned is if anybody gives lessons, it should be Luna Bella. Yeah. Yeah, she's a really good teacher. I'm going to come out from these little kind of inner stars. I think with a little bit of sparkle. Kind of see that there? Just extending that little sparkle of that little flake there. It's looking pretty good. I think it needs another highlight up though. Just overall. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre maybe and my thicker titanium white. And make sure that I've got a white snowflake, not a gray snowflake. Right. Through that last ultra bright whites. Using my yellow ochre and my titanium white to make the much brighter end part. So when we paint something, we do want to think about, you know, every subject in the same way we would think about any subject that we were painting. Right, just creating that that dimensionality. It really does look great. We're painting a snowflake. We're not stenciling a snowflake, but there's nothing wrong with stenciling. This is just another look. This, this is just it. another look. It's a painterly look. There's lots of other ways of getting different looks. But there are the lots one. of ways to paint the snowflake. This is just one. Okay, so we're going to dry everything here. Right. Okay. And come back and do the next step. And then, yeah, I think that we're probably going to be adding some, 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 some flurry flakes, some little tiny flurries, micro flakes, I guess, around that. Kind of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask about this paradox in a moment. The flake paradox. You know, little flakes in front of the big flake. All right, so this is a step, right? This is a step. What step is this? This will be step 11. Okay. Now I got to ask. Yeah. There seems to be a flake paradox happening here. What? Well, so you've you've got a close-up of a snowflake. Yeah. Amid snowflakes. See, in the reference image, you have, little, you have, you have snowflakes on snowflake. I don't know what that means. Maybe... The little tiny snowflakes? Because there's little tiny snowflakes all over the... I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you mean on the reference like yes. there's snow around the snow? Yes, there's little ice crystals. Yes, I have a snowflake paradox. I guess those could be background. Because art. That could be background snowflakes. They're just off in the distance. The, this yeah, this is the one is one the one close. that we see. This is the snowflake that we're going to see really well. So I'm going to take my um, aqua here. I'm going to get a little more yellow into it.
That's really pretty. I didn't expect that. Can add a little another dimensionality of this little aqua. I don't want to paint out everything I have. But I just want that next level. See how we're taking it? I see it. Painting a little bit of ice around the ice. Ice around the ice. Oh, and snowflakes don't fall in just singular crystals. I watched a documentary on snow. Oh, yeah. And apparently they fall in uh, different types of crystals depending on the temperature. So you can have different crystals in the same same snowfall. Really? Uh huh. That's what the snow expert said. I don't know. He said he had a he had a microscope that could see things up close. Well, and I, said see, it was I, true. I believe this because there's you know the there's a thing where you get the double rainbows and the and the, and the moon bows. Mm -hmm. I was watching the the science on that, and that has to do with whether the crystals are oriented flat or horizontal, or whether they're long crystals or short crystals, and that makes all the different kinds of halos, which I thought was kind of cool. Now I'm just detailing some work out here, making sure that this looks, you know, considered. And we can do that. Look at this, this dashing this around. Never thought so much about a snowflake in your life, did you? <laughs> mm, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe the last time we did a snowflake? We haven't done a snowflake. Well, then, no. This, this is our first snowflake. And now you know why. Because there's mass. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did some glitter and and snow we did glitter. well we've done some we that was when the year you did the glitter beard there were there were there was glitter among snowflakes that you did with the, oh yeah speaking of if you want other wonderful uh you know um winterly stuff with glitter there's like uh the snow. whole series of glitter painting yeah uh, especially the nutcracker was really good Oh, there's a good Santa. <laughs> All right. I think we've got a nice little snowflake up here in design. What do you guys think? Just enjoying your little snowflake. I like it. It looks good. I'm going to dry it and come back. We'll do the next step. Yeah, this is getting, I love the, the complexity of the layers, the light. It makes it uh, just sort of look cool. And yeah, this is a very painterly look, which is, you know, what we're here to do, painterly stuff, which I kind of, I like the way that this comes together. You ready for another step? I think I'm ready for another step. I think, yeah. Okay, so this step is an optional step. I'm going to splatter to create my snow. Now, you might not enjoy splattering just because it makes mess and it gets on your nails and it can go anywhere and it might mess up your painting. I have videos on how to splatter. I have tools for splattering if you have them. I think this really makes it much, much easier. I'm gonna load up my angle brush and I'm gonna very gently flick some snow. <laughs> that was Alexa. What was that? Alexa answered your question or something. Alexa said no snow is expected today. <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. See, she doesn't talk to me. 
She answers everybody else if you say thank you, but not me. I'm telling you, the AI is mad at me. There we go. That was super fun. So now I've got snow on my snowflake. Woo! <laughs> oh my goodness. That's great. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Okay. So I'm going to dry that so I can sign it. Do any finishing touches that I feel like I need. Yeah, the little, the little snowflakes. The spray. And I'm wondering, I didn't see any come all the way vertical. So, and you see there's spray everywhere, though. So the little canvas over, you can see on the um, the palette, it's over there. You can see all over the, the, the area around. So it does kind of just go whoosh everywhere. So you got to be careful with that. But, you know, snow. Snow? So I feel like I want this and this to be longer. No, we on the same step. New uh, step. new step. New step. We're gonna we're gonna because I'm gonna finish this out and sign it. Oh no! You have to you're gonna add one more. No, the, I don't. I'm gonna just leave it there. Okay. Snowflake is what it is. So I want these to be longer, and I could elongate them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a dot, make a series of dots that come out and get ever smaller. Oh yeah. So that'll help elongate that and still feel. Like snow. Because I really want that part of the snowflake to be kind of longer. And to make sure that ties in a little bit, you can just come back here and do like a little shorter version of it there. Kind of wrapping those up a little bit. That works. But I just wanted it to be a little bit longer. I'm going to take my white and my liner brush. I'm going to come here in the corner and give it a sign. And say, we painted a snowflake. Now Saturday we're going to paint a girl walking in the rain. As you know we like to. That's going to be fantastic. And then that Tuesday before Christmas, um, I've got a winter floral that is very chill to paint. Um, and then if you look, I've got a uh, January 1st painting up and scheduled. That's a New Year fairy that I think everybody should come to. It's three hoop, but I think everybody should come to. It's like my favorite design that I did earlier in the year. And I have been saving it for the new year. So you should definitely go hit that and remind yourself that. And Lynn says I did it again. Yay! I'm so glad I did it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, weird fun day. I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, stay safe out there, and I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.